Today I've got three spider and witchy DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. We're going to need some of these witch boots and the hat and some felt from Dollar Tree for the first two projects. Take your tags off and remove any extra. The first project is the witch's boots. So we're going to give these little witch's boots up here a makeover. We're going to start off by taking a roll of black felt and cut it into strips about, this is, I don't know, one and a half or two inch strips. These don't have to be perfect. Just cut them apart so you can manage them. You can see the shape under here is really nice and I don't want to pull off the tinsel because it helps hold the shape. I'm going to start by rolling that little piece in half so that I have a nice clean edge for the heel of the boot. I'm just rolling it over to see how I wrap it around. And I'm going to add some glue here. And then take the folded edge downward and press it down. Now, I was all over the place in this video, y'all, so bear with me. I'm going to show you and explain to you as much as I can to make up for my lack of uh, paying attention to the camera. Okay, so now we're going to wrap, just like you're wrapping a bandage. You want it to overlap, and then you can wrap it around the top of the boot to hold it in place like that. Now it's the heel is wrapped and we've got it secured to the upper part of the boot. Now you can just start wrapping it around. You don't have to leave it folded. You can unfold it. This is not precise at all. And you're just going to start going around the boot. Now with this felt, it's a little bit stretchy. So you can tug on it a little bit and put a little pressure on it. And, um, and it will give a little bit. So just continue around as you go all the way up to the, I guess, the calf part of the boot and cover up all that tinsel. We're going to let it overlap on the top about three quarters, probably three quarters of an inch, I would, I would guess. I'm going to cut off what we don't need, hot glue it down, and then you can take a little bit of hot glue and fold the edge under. This will give you a nice clean edge on the boot and it's going to help cover up some of that tinsel, kind of trap it down in there between the layers so that you don't see it. And don't worry about the inside of the boot, we're just going to leave it like that for now. So, so far this is what we have. Now I have a little area here that is not wrapped. So I'm just going to take another strip and I'm going to tuck it in using my little stick here. Just tuck it in there and then you can add a little bit of hot glue if you want to, but you really don't need it. And then just continue to wrap. I kind of hit it under there and I was able to get that little strange area that was hard to reach in my first go around. And you can go around this as many times as you want to until you get the look that you like and the coverage that you like. Again, if you pull, you can see that I'm pulling a little bit. You can kind of extend the amount of felt that you have because it will stretch. And it nicely helps cling to itself, which, you know, is good because it's easier to work with that way. And look at the shape already. It's already looking so much better. All right. Now I'm going to start on the bottom just because I like my seams to be in the back and the bottom and kind of in hidden areas. And I'm going to wrap around this boot down toward the toe. Pulling in a little bit. It's kind of laying onto the shape of the boot pretty nicely. And I, um, I actually, this was quite uh, an experience for me because I've never done the little boots before, but it was kind of fun. The transformation is so worth it, too. Really, it is. You gotta wrap around the curl of that toe, that little pointy area, and then any way you can get that to go down on there, just wrap it around that way. You want to keep that little hooked shape, that little curl there, you want to keep it that way. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of pulling it, and it's in different directions, but it is pressing down that tinsel and making that little toe stick up perfectly. Well, the toe of the boot, obviously. I don't know, maybe a witch does have a curly toe. Who knows what's under those boots? But I'm just going to use a little hot glue and then kind of form it with my fingers. And look how gorgeous, y'all. 
Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love this. You could do this with burlap if you wanted to. You know, if you wanted a more rustic look. But for Halloween, I'm going to keep it all black for witchy. Okay, now we're going to make a platform for that. So I'm just going to use some paper that coordinates. Some paper that I like, and it actually came out of a uh, Halloween paper pack that was gifted to me from a friend. So thank you, Marsha, if you're watching. Then I'm going to cut it down so that it fits my board. Go paint on the back. It's all spray painted. And then I'm just going to place it down on here. I'm going to pat it down with my hands. And then I will use a little tool here to help make sure that I have no bubbles and wrinkles. If you don't have spray paint, that's fine. You can just use a regular paint that you like. And I went with slate because it matches better with this dark gray background. But you could certainly use black or, or whatever you have. You can see it's a dark gray color. Matches well, though. Then what you don't see is me taking a little antiquing wax on my finger and going around the edges because I actually sanded that down to make it nice and smooth. Okay. Y'all, if I would have left everything in this video, this would have been an hour-long video, at least. All right, so now I'm just prepping my decorations or my embellishments for these beautiful boots because she's fancy like that. You can put your trim wherever you want. I like this burlap polka dot ribbon, and I'm going to use it to go around the top part of the boot. So I'm going to give myself about an inch of an overlap there, and then I'm going to start going around. Now, I'm only going to go... You'll see here how I'm going to make it actually fit the curve of the boot. I'm only going to go around the top with the glue until we get all the way around. So what you see me doing is just going around that top edge. Or what you don't see me doing. Either way, you can imagine. There we are. There it is. Okay, you're just going to keep going around like that. And then when you get it back to its original spot, press everything down and protect your fingers. I didn't do it this day, but I should have. And then look, I'm going to kind of make a little pleat here so that it goes up at an angle. Doing this is going to make the bottom edge of that ribbon lay flat on the boot. And to me, it just looks more like, it just looks better. It looks um, like it follows the shape of the boot as opposed to the boot beforehand. If you don't do this little pleat or this little tuck or whatever you want to call this, then you'll it will be standing away from the boot. And that's okay, too, if you want it to look like it's kind of folded over, but it kind of reminded me of a Santa boot. And that's not the look I'm going for, for our little witch here. No. All right. Look how cute. These are so cute. Okay. So now on this part, I am going to put some of the beautiful purple flowers on it because purple and black is what I'm going for in this video. And then I'm just going to take another scrap. You see how you can just stretch that? And I'm just going to ball it up and then stick it down in the top of each boot. If you wanted to use your boots, um, you want to leave them open, you could put flowers in the top if you wanted to, if you didn't want to put the flower on the side, however you want to do it. Okay, have you ever seen Poshmark? You know how you have to set everything up and look it's so pretty and beautiful? And I know people do it on Instagram too. So maybe this witch is a designer and she wants to sell her boots, her fancy handcrafted boots. So she's got to make them look pretty. So she's going to put them on a platform and she's going to stage those boots so that she will be the envy of town and everybody will want her designs. Press it down, let it dry, and then look at it. Look how those boots are posed. Ugh. If you're liking these fancy boots, please give me a thumbs up. It helps my channel and it makes me love you even more. Okay, let's take some of those spider rings that I cut the backs off of. And we're going to embellish with those. I don't want to put a buckle back on this boot. But I think the spiders look amazing. Amethyst spiders. Oh, I love it. Alright, so the next project is going to be a witch hat. We're going to have her a hat to match her boots. So we're going to go back to felt here. Grab you some felt. I've laid my hat upside down on it. And I am working on the back side of the frame. Again, leaving the tinsel on, it gives it a little more body. And you're not going to see any of that afterwards. So I'm just going to cut where I need. And I'm going to twist around where I need to twist around. I'm going to cut little 
darts there in the side so that I can wrap around the little edges of the brim of the hat. Because they have a little curve, I want them to keep that curve, so I'm going to get them out of the way. And then I'll fix it, make it look a little bit better in a little bit. But for this part, we're just going to start working on the tall part of the hat. I'm going to add some hot glue on the frame and then just pull it over. You can glue and trim as you go. You do not have to cover this entire back, but I'm going to show you how you can do it if you want it to look nice and neat. Because you can leave the this actual wreath like this, or you can do the second step, which I will show you in just a minute. So be sure you stay tuned so you can see what else you can do to give it a little more dimension. Okay, so you just want to finish this back off. And like I said before a couple of times, you can pull on this felt and it's a little stretchy. It has a little give. So continuing around, I'm going to trim off what I don't need. Just a little on that, ex on that side that's extra that's just getting in the way. And what's on this side, I'm just going to kind of roll under. It gives it a little more thickness and I like that. Then I can just roll it instead of cutting it and go right over to the edge that we've already glued down. And it's, see how it's nice and flat on the back? I like that. And by the way, I don't mind that the little bumps are showing. Um, those little bumped areas on the sides are where the tinsel is attached down to the frame. That's how they make these wreaths at Dollar Tree. So again, trimming off. I don't want anything too bulky on the end because I want to keep the taper on the end of the hat. That's one thing that I think is so cute in a witch's hat is that point. And since this one has a curve in it, I want to make sure that the the little curve is a natural, nice taper going downward, not with a big gap in the middle. But if it does happen to you, I'm going to show you how to fix that as well. So we're going to keep going down here. Now, everything is fixed on the back part of it, and we're going to work on the curved part of the hat. I am just going to pinch it and then glue it down. I'm going to pinch it and roll it and then glue it down until you get a nice point on it. I wanted to leave this in here so you could see exactly how to do this because in some of the last parts of what we're making, uh, embellishing this, it's really important that we have a nice crisp point on the end. So keep watching so you can see what to do. Okay, this is it so far. You see I got my little points right, same way I did on the top of the hat is how I did the little ones on the bottom. But you see on the top it has a little gap. We're going to fix that. So I'm pulling a thicker piece of this. So you're probably going to need two rolls of felt. Yeah, you're going to need two rolls. I think I just said a roll, but go ahead and grab two. And then I'm going to start twisting this like I did on the boots gonna glue it on the back side on the bottom and then just start working my way around because we're not we're gonna put something on the bottom of this hat you're not gonna see where it starts the fold so I'm gonna begin to twist and I am going to leave some wrinkles and dimples in the fabric as I go along this is the part where I'm saying you could you could leave it and not wrap this part on there or for additional interest I would think for me um, you're just gonna go ahead and wrap another piece on top of it you're gonna squeeze it you're gonna flip it you're gonna leave some wrinkles in it you're gonna make some little gathers you see here how there's little areas that are kind of gathered and you're gonna make sure that if you do a like a pleat or a gather that you do most of it to the right side because you're gonna be curving to the right. So we're gonna keep going to the right. Flip it up, and you want it to get more and more narrow as you go toward the top. See, I'm gonna continue here, gonna go around, grab a little pleat. There, I've pleated it again, and continue around. But you see, the tip looks weird on my hat. There's a gap between the end of the wreath body that's under there and then the additional length that I added by putting on the felt to the end of it because I wanted it to be a little bit longer we're gonna fix that you can either fix it at this point which I did not do um, 
I don't know what I was thinking when I did this part of it, but I couldn't quite get the angle right. So I went ahead and glued it down. And then I'm gonna take another piece of fabric. Now this one, the piece of fabric that I'm gonna use next is a square that I cut and then I folded the square in half to make it look like a triangle. So it's a doubled triangle, okay? So that's what you're looking at here. I'm going to put it underneath and then kind of sandwich it or wrap it around. Now I'm gluing it on the back side, not on the front. Remember we want it nice and neat on the front. Put all of your hard work on the back. In just a minute, you'll get to see what that looks like. Now we're going to do a little swag or some decoration for the front or the brim of that beautiful witch's hat that we have created. I've got thrifted and Dollar Tree pieces. Look at these beautiful purple leaves from Dollar Tree. Now on my camera, from my angle, it looks like it's coming off the flowers and the greenery is a little on the bluish side, but they're beautiful purple. So these are thrifted, these little pieces of, I believe that's eucalyptus, maybe. They're thrifted, but you can get something glittery, glittery, glittery or similar to it, you know, at Dollar Tree. Whatever you choose to put here. Here's the beautiful purple flowers and this kind of a two-tone purple flower. I love that it has the little cone in the center of it. It just, I don't know, it just looks witchy to me. Look at this. This is called Farmhouse Witch Hazel. I was able to find out of 12 stores, about three picks in different colors. But isn't it gorgeous in this arrangement? I also used some on a pumpkin that I did recently for fall. That turned out really pretty. So I'm gonna take a zip tie, or you can use a pipe cleaner, whatever you have here. Zip tie is gonna hold it nice and tight and it makes it easy so you don't have to keep picking it up and putting it down. You're gonna cinch it all the way to in the middle, clip off the excess. And then I'm just kind of, you know, fluffing. I fluff my arrangements like I fluff my bows here. And then I have these little, they look like little, I don't know, like a little berry. I don't know what these are. But again, they look kind of spiky and they look kind of witchy to me, so I thought they were nice in here. And I think it's gonna fit nice right across the bottom. So now we're gonna work on the ribbon. And the ribbon is purple, although it looks kind of blue. That velvet ribbon comes in a three foot roll, so I went ahead and cut each of these two into three foot pieces as well. And then I am just going to cinch it up. These are all wired in the middle. And don't worry, if you didn't catch that, I'm gonna let you see on the other two strips of ribbon exactly what I do again. I'm just gonna clip that off. Then I'm going to take another piece, and this one's gonna be in the center, cross it over itself, pinch it up in the middle. This is really good quality um, for a Dollar Tree ribbon. Really, really good quality. I'm gonna take the next one, and it's sheer with spider webs, and the other one is black with white spider webs. I'm gonna pinch that one up in the middle too. And grab up the rest of my ribbon. Just stack them all on top of each other, and these are all roughly the same size. Now using my pipe cleaner, I'm gonna twist it around the middle gonna use a pipe cleaner this time because I'm going to need something to attach this down to the little swag that we made. And I'm gonna do it very tightly because I have to flip this bow so I am pushing down and twisting over the little chenille stem. I'm going to trim up a little bit on these edges or the ends of the ribbon. To me this is an important part of making your bows and I'm not gonna do it fast. I'm gonna show you what it looks like, that it does take me some time to do things to. I don't have superpowers. Well, through the power of editing, I have superpowers, superpowers, but I don't have any personally. So you're gonna trim this off. You could also do a dovetail if you like the way that that looks. And I'm going to just continue to move my ribbons around and move my bow pieces around so that I can fluff it out and make it look beautiful. Now they're all about the same length and that's a good working length because once you get it down then you can trim it up if you want to trim it up more. There I am fluffing. 
Love my fluffing. And you can move those now. You've got them very tightly into that pipe cleaner. You can move them in any angle you like. To attach it down, I'm just going to flip my little greenery swag over on top of the back of my bow, and I'm going to tightly twist them together. You can leave it on or you can cut it off. It doesn't matter, whichever way you want to do it. And then I'm going to prepare to put it down. Look how pretty this is. I love it. So as I was fluffing, I noticed that for the size of my hat, I had a little too much going on down here. Just too much length in the ribbon. So I decided to cut a couple of pieces to look more like little flyaways. And make it a little more... Hmm, I don't know. To make the size a little bit better, I guess is what I'm saying. So I'm now I'm going to take a little piece of, uh, this is like a cotton cord, and I have it threaded through an upholstery needle. I'm going to go through the back of the hat over the, as part of the plastic edge of it, I guess you could say. And then I'm going to go through the back of my arrangement, right up through the middle, and then go underneath it. And then you can wrap it a few times if you want to, but mine held into place fine right here. And then I'm just going to tie this off in the back with a couple of knots to hold it in place. When you flip it back over, if you need a little more support, and it wouldn't be surprising with a bow that size to need more support, just add some hot glue and then press it into place and hold it there for a minute. Give it a little time to, to dry and then you'll be good to go. Then you can do all of that extra little fluffing that you like to do. All right, so I'm going to make something for the top. Now you see the taper is perfect. It's exactly how I wanted it. I'm going to start making a little, it's like a little, I don't know what you would call this. It's like a little mini, mini greenery piece, I guess. I'm going to use some black leaves and one of my purple leaves, one of these beautiful witch hazels with the little curl on it. And then I'm going to glue a little berry in the middle with a piece of wire. I'm going to glue it right to the tip let that dry and then i'm going to glue it down on the leaf so that there's a little gap in between and look y'all once the glue cools of course look at this it can move i forgot to show you but i did actually put a spider on there that you will see in the end screen of the video so be sure that you stay to the very end to hang this i'm just going to use another piece of my pipe cleaners and I'm just going to glue it right down on the back of the hat. And then you can hang it up from there once it's cool. Last project is a spider dish. So we got this little tray at Dollar Tree. It's the spider. And then a glass bowl from Dollar Tree. Now take your tags off. Wash the bowl nicely. Get it nice and clean and dry it off. I'm going to use a little foam block and some felt and these little rings, greenery that we had left from the other projects. I'm gonna start off with some electrical tape going about eh, an inch and a half down. I am going to tape this off. I had seen in another video that somebody likes to use electrical tape doing uh, curved projects. So I thought I'd give it a try. And I have to tell you, I am very happy with the results as you'll see here shortly. So I'm gonna tape this off. I'm going to tape it off because we're going to be coloring part of this bowl. Alright, so on the bottom of the bowl, I like the way it went down. It looks nice, but you can always move it around if you don't get the right angle. Got a little too much glue, but I do take some of that off. I am going to take some Mod Podge and go all the way around. This is going to help our, it's going to help the paint stick down on this glass and it's gonna keep it from bleeding. So you can go a little bit over your tape with your Mod Podge. I just scraped off when I had too much Mod Podge and put it back in the bottle. Yeah, see, we don't wanna waste anything, do we? Once it is good and dry, it looks almost clear. Then I'm gonna take some black paint. It says metallic, but it really does not look metallic to me, so I don't know what that's about. And I'm going to put it all over this the same area that we put down the Mod Podge that's where we're gonna put it on here 
all the way down and if it gets on the tape that's okay too still gonna give you a nice good line so it's gonna take three coats and I'm drying it in between with my little Arteza heat gun but you can use a blow dryer if you don't have one I'm gonna cut down a piece just big enough for my tray and then I'm gonna wrap it with a scrap of felt and it fits nicely here I'm gonna trim off the excess I'm gonna use some hot glue might be better off on cool temp because you know styrofoam and and glue it can melt and make a big mess and then squeeze it down trim off what you need to trim off and then it's gonna be great for right here because we want something that's gonna lift it up to almost the same level as the sides of that little tray that we're putting it on so I'm gonna use some glue and put it right in the center and press it down into place then I'm gonna use my little insulator to hold it down and then once it's dry and yes it is all dry we can peel off the tape Ta da look how nice that is and I'm gonna show you why we want the bottom of the bowl to be black so you see where it sits here see that we do not we're gonna be putting florals in there and I don't want to see a bunch of flower picks under there so now that this is painted black you won't see this at all I'm going to use hot glue here more hot glue and then attach this down now we're gonna be using this as a candy bowl quite obviously this is not something that you can wash put the dishwasher and all that this would be like one of those one-time use things if you're gonna put food in it otherwise you could just use it for a candle or something like that so I'll press the bowl into place and then I just put a weight in that to let it dry while we work on some of my greenery so I cut these greenery picks down from they were like triples and I cut them down so they would be individual leaves so it would stretch out the amount of little black leaves and coloring we will have in our arrangement that's gonna go around it so I'm just using some spare picks I had left over and I'm just gonna glue them on the back now we have individual little black leaves perfect now you didn't see me put down the purple but I stuck the purples in there I had three of those left now I'm just going to go around and add here and there with some of these black leaves the felt when you put it on your styrofoam block be sure that you stretch it when you put it down so that you can, you don't want to be able to see through it but you want to stretch it enough that you can easily poke your um, your stems through it so whether you have a wire stem or a wood pick that you decide you want to use because you you could use toothpicks and stuff if you wanted you want it to be able to perforate your um, fabric that's over there okay so then I cut my big eucalyptus picks apart that I had left over and I'm just using those in little single little single uses here and there so that I can stretch it out you know so I get a, a balanced look all the way around and y'all this is this is what I do which I did not edit out I will put things down I will bend things sometimes they bend and they don't want to go in the first time you just keep working with it I'll put something in place and I don't like it so I move it and put something else there you see I'm struggling here it's because I didn't stretch it out far enough yeah I didn't stretch my fabric enough so now I've got my same coloring and the same greenery that I have in my witch's hat and in the witch's boots which makes it perfect plus the witch's hat has a little spider on it as you will see shortly so everything is nicely coordinated and this would be so cute for Halloween decorations or Halloween party or you know you could use it at the office for a little Halloween get-together you could give any of these as gifts because they are so cute and who doesn't love a, a sweet little happy witch a good witch right So I'm continuing in to turn it I will turn it in all angles and look at it and make sure that I have it covered and you can't see any of the picks underneath the painted part of the bowl can you perfect and we're putting enough greenery in here that we are not seeing the base either and you can't see the foam so I'm just gonna add the little berries and the witch hazel and whatever else we need all in there and then see I have some of these witches left I'm gonna not witches <laughs> spiders and I'm gonna put those on there so maybe this is a mama spider and she's got her babies with her and they're all hanging out 
at the group at the Halloween party okay so I'm just going to see where I want to put them and put them down I only had two left out of this whole pack and then I'll add another one over here on this side look how cute oh my gosh I mean for as cute as a spider can possibly be this is really cute for a happy witch decoration don't you think I think so all right so let's see what it looks like with some candy in it gotta have candy corn and worms and more candy corn and worms and more candy corn isn't this nice this is cute I like this and my kids love being able to snack on the treats after I did my final reveal so these are the projects that we have. I went ahead and left the old, the original witch's hat in there so you can make a comparison. Here is our cute little candy tray and I just put some lights under it. Lighting makes a big difference and when you're doing holiday decor, lighting really, really helps. It really makes an impact. Do you like candy corn? What do you like, candy corn or caramels? Which one? Here are the little boots. Now, if it bothers you that you have a little extra hot glue in places like you can see on the toe of this boot, just go back over it with a permanent marker or some black flat paint and you won't be able to notice it. It'll just blend right on in there together. Here's our hat and let me show you what this looks like. This is so cute. look it looks like the spider is suspended from there i love that i would love it if you would subscribe to my channel if you have not already subscribed we have a lot of fun here share the video with other people who you think might enjoy this type of content and doing that also lets youtube know that i'm working hard and i'm making content that's not just the same old same old but that i'm bringing you something with some value and that you enjoyed it and youtube want you to enjoy being here i believe in you and i know that you can do these projects i know you can and these are easy to find materials to do them with if y'all want to have a chance to win a box of goodies for the 16,000 subscriber giveaway go check out my last video which i will have linked for you to see if you can enter thank you so much for stopping by I appreciate you all so, so very much. I'll see you again soon. Bye.